You got nothing. Square one. But you know the business. And I know the chemistry. You, uh, you want to cook crystal meth? You. You and, uh, and me. <laughs> That's right. Wow, well, this is, uh, this is a good look for you. And you're maybe only the world's second biggest homo. Could you shut up and help me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Work it, baby. Work it. Turn that off. You see, hydrofluoric acid won't eat through plastic. It will, however, dissolve metal, rock, glass, ceramic. So there's that. Heads or tails? No, I'll, I'll do the, the body and the acid, OK? Heads or tails? That's two out of three. Hey, yo, I'm trying to pitch one off in here. Just give me some privacy, would ya? Get off the toilet! Get off the toilet! Stop it! We're not going to need pseudoephedrine. We're gonna make phenyl acetone in a tube furnace. Then we're gonna use reductive amination to yield methamphetamine, four pounds. So no pseudo. No pseudo. So you do have a plan. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. What are you doing? This is the first day of the rest of your life, but what kind of life will it be, huh? Will it be a life of, of fear, of, oh, no, 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 I can't do this, of never once believing in yourself? Hmm? I don't know. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Methylamine. Where's the methylamine? I don't see the methylamine. Yeah, well, that's where I ran into uh, some trouble. In, in this episode, uh, we have a, a sequence, a very fun sequence for us to shoot, uh, where Walt and Jesse break into a chemical supply uh, facility and steal a big barrel of methylamine. That was not a chemical storage facility in real life. That was a sewage treatment plant. And it was, uh, you know, it, it smells like a sewage treatment plant, and we spent all night out there. You know, it's funny. I, a lot of people would probably disagree with me, but I, I see our series as, as kind of a comedy. Uh, it's got a lot of humor to it, and that's on purpose. And, and whenever we can believably add humor to the scene, to the, to the episode, I'm all for it. Of course, they're wearing their, their funny ski masks, which our wonderful uh, costume designer, Kathleen DeToro, had handmade, you know, just for that sequence. I wanted big pom-poms on top of the, uh, the hats and uh, to make them look, you know, slightly, or maybe more than slightly ridiculous. Look at theirs. Sometimes comedy makes the tragedy go down a little easier, makes it a little more palatable. You know, because at the end of the day, this is a story about a guy dying of cancer who's cooking crystal meth. So, you know, we need to leaven it with a little humor or else it'd be unwatchable. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Look, Skyler. Not yet. Please, I... I have the talking pillow. Well, my writers and I knew we wanted to have an intervention scene in, in that episode, Gray Matter. You need this treatment, and nothing can stop you from getting it, except you. 
I tell you, that scene, for my money, is probably the, it's not the flashiest scene in our series, you know, that would be, you know, blowing up Tuco's headquarters or, or the RV out in the desert or something like that, you know. Uh, Anna, Dean, uh, Betsy, RJ, all of them just nailed it over and over and over again. It was like watching a stage play. All I have left is how I choose to approach this. It's, it's tough being on a set uh, with actors this good because when they're being funny, it's hard not to laugh and ruin a take. For God's sakes, while well, we're just sitting out there having a cookout like nothing's going on. And in that sequence, uh, there are people misting up. Big, tough uh, grips, you know, a couple of them. And, and folks on the set, I was getting teary-eyed. Just, just, you know, you can't help it. I choose not to do it. It was really amazing to watch. I was so proud of every member of our cast. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Walt's hair was falling out pretty badly. And I think he just said better to shave it all off than, uh, than have it hanging in clumps. Walt is making these little choices, some big, some little. Big choice, bad choice was cook meth. Little choice is to not wait for all his hair to fall out, but to take ownership of it and shave his head bald. We have this wonderful footage of Walt shaving his head on camera. And it would have been nice footage to have in our show, but you have to keep things moving. There's only so much time you have for 48 minutes to tell your story. It's wonderfully dramatic footage. The look in his face is so stirring, very moving. It's, it's a very moving scene. I was nervous to ask him to shave his head. His wonderful wife, Robin, who's a very sweet lady, uh, very clearly didn't love the idea of him shaving his head. We independently, Karen, my producer, and myself, and our makeup people looked into the possibility of a skinhead wig, a bald wig. But Brian just wanted nothing to do with that. He just said, you know, the character is clean shaven and, and I should be too. He's a trooper. He's, he's a pretty great guy to work with. Good morning. Could you pass the butter, please? Badass dad. This is not the way my hair usually looks. This is because I had a wonderful full head of hair that uh, I shaved off sort of in solidarity with Brian Cranston. A lot of our crew people shaved their heads in solidarity. And Brian Cranston actually did the shaving on everybody. During the lunch break, Brian would uh, they'd wrap a towel around someone and he'd shave their head. And he got very good at it, actually. He could do it almost like a Marine Corps barber. It felt kind of liberating. But now it's growing in really weird, so I don't know what the hell to do. You feel that first, and you're like, oh, this is a bad idea. But then you're committed, so. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. We've got a scene where our two main characters have to dispose of a body in a bathtub by corroding it with acid. Vince was able to incorporate Walt's chemistry history into the storyline. He knew exactly hydrofluoric acid would be the perfect acid to use to dissolve a body. Except this should not have happened in a bathtub because this particular type of acid eats right through a bathtub, right through porcelain and steel. A human body, a 185 or 90 pound man, is completely dissolved into a gelatinous mess. It was fake bone, hair, weird, fleshy, gooey, squishy material. Gore, you just don't make gore, you have to develop gore. So we developed this, tested it, tested the thickness of it. We tested adding things like, like his gold tooth. <laughs> Your instinct takes you naturally to, oh, make it worse, more teeth, give me another clavicle. You know, more goo. 
it really started to make me nauseous, did yeah, it? Yeah, no, I mean, it just really felt like... Oh God. It's like being eight years old again, except getting paid for it. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Chemistry is the study of matter. When I first came up with the idea for Breaking Bad, what I really knew I wanted to do was create a character who was a perfectly nice, decent, likable guy who, through forces that he feels like are beyond his control, is forced to do something really reprehensible. One of the worst things I could think of that he could do would be to cook crystal meth. Methamphetamine is a very potent drug. It just wreaks havoc. You know the business, and I know the chemistry. You want to cook crystal meth? That's right. We had the DEA consultants throughout the pilot, which were extremely helpful to us, really wonderful guys that help us set up our labs. We had people from the street even to set up their version. The chemists of the DEA have to actually know how to cook meth in order to deconstruct it and verify that it is indeed meth. We had a DEA chemist help us on the day we shot the pink, and we'd mix it up a little pinker. Dennis uh, Peterson, our special effects guy, would say, let me mix up some cola and some chocolate chocolate milk and you know this will give us uh, this step of the process and we'll have it foam up you know we'll put some carbon dioxide in it and our chemist would say yeah exactly good job that's how that looks we don't want it to be a handbook <laughs> to the audience of how to create meth but we want to show the intricacies and really what can go wrong with it this has to be a show about the consequences of a really bad decision I do not think that it glamorizes crystal meth at all I think it shows it in, a, in, in its absolute truthful form and it's not pretty. The long term is that this is an evil, awful drug, crystal meth, and it creates a tremendous amount of damage to society. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. I need you to focus and... Hey, sit down! Sit down! Damn it, Hank! Yeah, well, sorry, babe. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Get him! Get him! Okay, sit down! Okay, sit down. down. Yeah, yeah, sit your ass down! Yeah. Comprende, yeah. you two! Sit down! Shut the tape! Okay, okay, okay. Hank, uh, you know, knows a little bit about everything, but uh, not, not a lot about uh, anything in particular. But he is a good DEA agent. I'm back, babe. What's up? Hank is very manly. Marie loves that he's manly. He's just unbearably, you know, brazen and macho and, you know, he's coarse. <sighs> Dean and Hank are like twins. Hello, Zippy. He has got that guy down so well. I think he's just, I think it's a pair of old comfortable shoes for Dean. You just slip right in him and away he goes. So it looks like meth, but it's, uh, it's too damn white. The Drug Enforcement Administration has been a wonderful asset to us. We've had their help in setting up a, a DEA raid on a meth lab. They had an agent here on set who made sure that every last movement that these entry agents made was the way the DEA does it in real life. We saw a lot of uh, busting down meth house films. But we certainly saw the aftermath of the bus and, and what the houses looked like and what the drug paraphernalia looked like so that we could familiarize ourselves with the, with the terms and, and all that stuff so we don't look like morons when we're doing it. Any time and every time we can make something as real as possible, I'm all for it. It's great playing a D agent, yeah. I like to take it home at night, you know. Bust people on the way home, you know, it's great. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. I, I wanted Walter Jr. to be a character who had cerebral palsy, first and foremost, because I hadn't seen that character on television much. And, and, you know, my basic philosophy is whenever I can, try to show the audience something they either they haven't seen or they don't see much. Yeah, no, I thought I heard mice. <laughs> That's all we need, huh? So, what's up, pal? 
What the hell is wrong with you? Walt Jr. is a 17-year-old guy that's with a disability that's just trying to fit in. I have the same symptoms, but he has a lot more severe since some kind of a muscle disorder that messes with your motor skills. I wanted to hire a young man who really did have that condition, and RJ does. It was pretty important that they hired an actor with CP because if they didn't, and the actor comes in and they don't really know much about it, they'll try to overact it and mess it up. He's a really great kid. He's smart. He's sharp. He, I forget all the time that he's as young as he is. He's very bright, very attentive, and and he can improv really well. He threw out a couple lines that we weren't expecting and just went with it, and it was really nice. It was really appropriate. Those are really supposed to be in style now. The skaters wear them. Do I look like a skater? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, good. And it wasn't his line, so he threw it out. So he's, I mean, whenever anybody can do that, it, it shows that they're listening and they're aware and they're able to take it to the next level. And that's who, the, that's who you want to work with as an actor. Maybe treatment isn't the way to go. Then why don't you just die already. Just give up and die. With this character, I want to show that any actor with a disability can pretty much do anything that they want to as long as they work hard at it. I just adore him. Everyone does. You just, once you meet him, you just can't not love him. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. What are you doing? These are my good clothes. You can't go home smelling like a meth lab. One of the greatest memories of sh shooting the pilot, Brian, is in his underwear a lot. And uh, is that really one of your greatest memories? Listen, let me finish what I was going to say. Walt in the pilot is in his underwear a lot. He wears his underpants uh, proudly. I have a nudity clause in my contract that insists I'm naked in every single show I do. <laughs> Damn, man, are you some kind of nudist? The day we shot that scene, I said to Brian, you know, it's written that you're in your underpants. And he says, yeah. And I said, well, I'm just saying, if you're not okay with that, if you got any discomfort, we can, you know, he brought up some sweatpants in a bag or he, you know, and Brian said, well, no, he's in his underpants. I said, oh, okay, good. And then he said to me, what kind of underpants would Walt wear? And I wanted to say, you know, tidy whities And before I could, he said, well, it should be like tidy whities right, jockey? underpants because they're stupider looking. You look more vulnerable wearing them. You gotta hope it's gonna be one of those iconic images that uh, kind of sums up the show. This kind of everyman character in his suede wallaby shoes and his underpants with a 45 in his hand, ready to take on whatever comes over the rise, over the hill. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Walt uses an old RV that he bought in the pilot as a rolling meth lab that he and Jesse cook in. Thank goodness, Brian Cranston is quite a good driver. There's a lot of footage in that uh, pilot in which Walt is actually, Brian is actually driving the RV. You know, they're like big boats and you could turn an RV 360 and it'll just kind of float this way or float that way. And action van. The RV we used, I think it was built in 1983, a very nice older couple had driven all around the continental U.S. in it. And they were very proud of it, and then they sold it to us. And we pretty much destroyed it. And I always worried uh, when I'd go to the set every day that these poor elderly folks would be driving past one day and say, oh, those are the folks we sold the RV. Oh, God, what happened to it? You know, so. <laughs> RVs are funky, you know, they haven't really perfected that thing. It's still an outhouse on wheels. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. And then you walk in here and you bring me more men? <laughs> Woo, that's a brilliant.
brilliant plan, is it? You got one part of that wrong. This is not meth. We knew first off in that episode, Crazy Handful of Nothing, that uh, George Masters did such a great job writing. We were working out, hammering out the idea before he started writing. And uh, we knew we wanted Walt to turn the tables on Tuco at the end of the episode. And we knew Walt couldn't do that with brute force. Are you nuts? We want to find out. He's just not that kind of a character. He's not going to suddenly turn into Rambo. What his advantage is, is his scientific knowledge. Hey, what is it? Fulminated mercury. A little tweak of chemistry. And I'd always heard about this stuff. It's very dangerous stuff. It's, it's an explosive. I should hasten to add, we didn't use real fulminator mercury. That would have been way too dangerous. Dennis Peterson, our special effects wizard, I think he used primer cord, actually, uh, which is explosive rope. But uh, that scene when, he, when the windows blow out and the glass rains down right into the camera, just wonderfully done by Dennis and by our director, Bronwyn Hughes, who just uh, put the camera in all the right places to, to make the most of that sequence. It's a funny thing with, with, uh, with the episode, with the explosion in, in that episode. You want it to be really as big as it can be, but on the other hand, Walt has to survive this explosion relatively unscathed, and, and you know, it has to not be dead. So the trick with a scene like that is to, to find the happy medium, have a big enough, cinematic enough explosion, and yet, yet have it be believable that Walt and Tuco and his henchmen survived it. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. In our Cancer Man episode, Walt shorts out the uh, car battery in a, in a fancy BMW convertible and, and at a gas station and blows up the car because he's getting revenge on this jackass, this pompous yuppie. Yeah, I would not want to be on the, the other side of this one. Who is uh, sort of embodying at that moment all the things that, that Walt feels frustrated by and feels angry at. That was a fun scene to watch. I was there on the day we blew that up. And um, Dennis Peterson, our effects guy, as always, did a wonderful job, as did our picture car, our transpo guys who found that BMW. You know, magic of film. When you see uh, the BMW drive up, come on, move your ass. And Ken wins the yuppie who's driving it. it. Pulls up. That's a whole different BMW. That's actually a working one. And our wonderful Teamsters found a, a working BMW, and then a wrecked, I guess, water damaged or wrecked BMW convertible. Our guys did a great job matching these two cars. The, the car that uh, Dennis and his crew wound up blowing up. You know, it was just a big hulk of metal that, that they had to roll into place. When Walt blows up this car, it's fun, it's exciting, it is for me anyway, but it's also really stupid. In doing so, he could have blown up this, you know, could have caused a big fire at this gas station. He could have been caught, at the very least, you know, gone to jail. So it's one of these moments where it's exciting, and yet you also have to think, you know, the guy we're watching here, this, this protagonist, this hero, of our show we're watching is kind of, he's kind of unbalanced. <laughs> For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. Some straight like you, giant stick up his ass, all of a sudden at age, what, 60, he's just gonna break bad? I'm 50. Well, the pilot doesn't have a name, it's just called a pilot. But uh, episodes 101 and 102 are titled uh, The Cat's in the Bag and the Bag's in the River. And that is a reference to one of my favorite movies, Sweet Smell of Success, which, for my money, has the most quotable dialogue of any movie ever made. 
and one of the great lines in that movie, Tony Curtis says to Burt Lancaster, cat's in the bag and the bag's in the river, referring to this dirty deed he's done. Oh. Episode 103 is called Cancer Man, which is kind of a shout out to the X-Files, which I worked on for many years, and that refers to one of our most popular bad guy characters who alternately went by Cigarette Smoking Man or Cancer Man. Episode 104 is titled Gray Matter. Gray Matter refers to, of course, Elliot Schwartz's company name and also to the idea that, that Walt is living in this gray in-between world that he's found himself in due to his ventures into criminality. What a cook. But then in 105, we get back to movie quotes. $50,000. One oh five is titled Crazy Handful of Nothing. I'm all in. Nope. Not falling for it, buddy, I fold. A handful of nothing. And when George Masters, our writer on that episode, came up with that title, I didn't know what it referred to. I was like, what the hell is this? And I felt stupid when he told me it's one of my favorite movies. It's Cool Hand Luke, starring Paul Newman. I want all of it. Peter Gould, our writer of our last episode of the season, titled his episode a No Rough Stuff type deal. 70 grand. What did you say? I didn't realize that that was a reference to uh, Fargo, the movie Fargo. I, I believe the title a No Rough Stuff type deal relates to the episode in that Walt thinks he's going to impose his will on this meth enterprise he's entered into. In other words, he's going to make sure it's a No Rough Stuff type deal. It's just business. And he's proved wrong at the end of the episode. <laughs> For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com. You got this money from Tuco. Yeah. So Tuco gave you this, is what you're saying. Well, he made a deal. In this episode, you saw Walt and Jesse go from the frying pan and into the fire. This is, this is like a, a non-criminal's idea of a drug meet. This is like, oh, I saw this in a movie. Ooh, yes. look at me. Walt and Jesse are now in business with a really scary dude. Mr. Clean and his boy. He's, he's crazy. I mean, he's just beat the hell out of one of his own guys for no reason at all, other than the fact he was amped up on, on meth that Walt himself had cooked. We're going to make phenyl acetone in a tube furnace, and we're going to use reductive emanation to use Walt is the shit. smartest dumb guy I know. In other words, Walt is, a, is probably a borderline genius. So you do have a plan. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, science. But as my dad used to say, you know, some people are really, really smart, and yet they don't have sense enough to know when to come, out, come in out of the rain. Can you handle four pounds? Listen, old man, talk is talk. But only me money. That's bad. In an odd way, Jesse, who's kind of been the, the guy who failed Chemistry 101, the, the acolyte, the young student here, he's much wiser in this episode than, than Walt is. How much cash do you need? <sighs> More. He's, he's asking a very sage question. How much do you need? He's not as greedy as Walt is. What did you just do? Skyler, at the end of this episode, still doesn't know what Walt is up to, doesn't know about his, his criminal, criminal avocation. What's that smell? Oh, yeah, it's sacred Navajo herbs. But she's very upset at the end of this episode for a whole different reason. She's really angry by her sister Marie, who is a shoplifter, it turns out. And Marie's shoplifting has actually gotten Skylar into trouble. You're not going to admit this, are you? <laughs> I can't really admit to something when I have no knowledge of what it is that I'm admitting. And, you know, what if he gets caught? You know, what happens then? The money is forfeit. It's going to the authorities. So he'll wind up with nothing. It'll ruin his family. He may spend his last few months in, in prison. <laughs> Oh, my God.
He doesn't see how dangerous this is, and by the end of this episode, I think he's starting to see just how deadly the situation could become. Oh! Damn, man, look at that, look! And yet now, it may be too late. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com.